Hey everybody, this is Arnold Schmidt. I'm a professor at California State University Stanislaus where I teach literature and creative writing and film. And I'm here with uh, Randy Siepkin uh, to uh, talk about uh, the film Election. Randy, how are you doing tonight? I am doing excellently and looking forward to participating with you in an introduction of tonight's film, which we are going to discuss next week. Yeah, and it's going to be me and uh, Larry Gavinter, uh, who is a uh, professor uh, emeritus from California State University. Stanislaus is also going to be joining us. So we have both uh, Randy and Larry, who are both uh, professors of poli sci. Um, Randy is at uh, MJC, so we have some, some expertise. And I understand we have an actual political candidate joining us. We actually have a political candidate joining us, and that's going to be Kate Nygaard, a former member of the Modesto School Board and a candidate for the assembly in an era when women candidates were not all that present. So that should provide an interesting perspective on today's film. Great. And what we're, just so everybody understands, what we're going to do right now is to talk a little bit about the film, um, about uh, Alexander Payne and, and uh, about some of the political issues that come up. And then we're going to um, uh, get us ready for a um, discussion of the film uh, next week, uh, which is uh, Monday evening. Um, and that'll be a live discussion with the four of us uh, talking about this. So Alexander Payne uh, is uh, uh, you know, well known to us as a director, has directed a lot of uh, very successful films. Um, his features include uh, Citizen Ruth, um, uh, 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 Election, which we're talking about here, about Schmidt, The Sideways, The Descendants, uh, Nebraska, one that I particularly like, and Downsizing. Um, the films have been nominated or won lots of different awards. Election got one nomination. Um, uh, uh, about Schmidt got two, Sideways got five and one won, The Descendants five and one win, um, and Nebraska uh, nominations, uh, uh, six nominations. So he's a very well respected director and this is a, 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 very, a very popular film. But just to give a sense of the kinds of things that he's been thinking about, um, he starts with, um, with a, a, one of the early films is Citizen Ruth, which is a kind of a very crazy, um, film about, uh, about abortion, pro-life, pro-choice. Uh, uh, pro it's about the debate, but it's done in very over-the-top funny ways um, and uh, very, you know, controversial in a sense, but very, very kind of poking fun at all sides. So, um, you know, in, in that sense, quite, quite good. Um, about Schmidt, which is uh, about a Jack Nicholson character who uh, retires and realizes his life is kind of a mess. Um, he had questions about relationships with his wife, with his family. It has Kathy Bates in it and she's fantastic. Um, she was nominated, uh, but both of them were nominated for, um, for um, a best actor um, and she for best uh, supporting actress um, and other, other um, they got other um, accolades as well, and Payne, of course, um, gets uh, gets uh, uh, nominated as well. So quite a fun film. Again, very kind of crazy and over the top. Um, one of those dystopian families from hell uh, films. Um, Sideways is a, um, a kind of a slightly different, it's a, a Paul uh, Giametti um, and uh, Thomas Hayden Church, and, uh, you know, he, he's a um, uh, He's get, his friend is getting married, and so they decide to do one last, um, you know, one last kind of outing. Um, and uh, they go to the wine country, and all kinds of things happen. In some ways, it's a it's it's a a film about honesty and honesty in relationships, and what happens when you're dishonest <laughs> in relationships. Um, so kind of interesting in in that way. Um, it also was um, you know was uh, well uh, well received. Um, uh, in, uh, in terms of, uh, of Academy Awards, it received a series of nominations, uh, a Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting, and it, it won uh, Best Adapted Screenplay, so quite, uh, quite good. Um, the Descendants, which is a, a story about, uh, again, a family, a family drama uh, or melodrama 
Uh, the family is, um, a, you know, a group of a group of siblings. One of whom, George Clooney, has managed his money well. The others have not. The family is custodian to a, a large piece of real estate, and then everybody wants to sell the, the land, but he doesn't. And while this happens, his wife goes into coma. And there's family stuff with his kids, and all kinds of crazy things. His wife's having an affair. It's all uh, really kind of uh, kind of wild. Um, it also um, it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director. It won Best uh, Adapted Screenplay. Uh, so quite quite good. And Clooney is 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 good in this. Um, Nebraska uh, it, with um, Bruce Dern and Stacy Keach. Uh, Dern receives this letter that we've all received saying, you have won $10 million, you know, and of course on the bottom in fine print it says, if you have the winning lumber, but he doesn't believe it and he's going to go to the place and get that money and of course his son tells him, you know, you can't do this and it turns into a road trip. Again, it's a family drama and it's really, uh, really quite good. Um, nominated for Best Director, uh, Best Actor, Best Picture, Best Scre Original Screenplay. Uh, cinematography is fantastic. It's shot in black and white. So very, very interesting. Um, downsizing, uh, the most recent film, uh, is about um, people being shrunk in order to uh, save money. Uh, and um, it's, it, it, this one has, in a certain sense, a different kind of a social conscience than some of the other films. Um, because one of the things that happens when uh, when Matt Damon and is shrunk is he enters a world of kind of a middle class world of luxury, but also realizes that there's a dark world out there, a world of poverty, and he's trying to figure out what he's supposed to do, which which how how can he make meaning uh, out of his life? How which world can he be meaningful in? So it it has a um, a little bit more um, a substance in that sense in terms of social uh, in terms of social issues. Um, one of the things that um, that uh, Payne talks about and the critics talk about with him, and, and, and this comes up in um, in election as well, is the difference between ethics and morality. Uh, but his films often have this idea of how do we deal with ethics? How do we deal with um, how do how do we live a good life? Um, and one of the quotes that I liked uh, from a recent uh, book that I read of, about him talks about he says the characters are not bad. He says they're not good and they do bad things, but they don't do them repeatedly. So in other words, it's somebody who gets confused, gets into a situation and does something that is ethically problematic and maybe even criminal. It's wrong, but it's not their habit. They don't always do this. And I thought that was really kind of interesting because a lot of times we think about characters as either good or bad. And he is at least, you know, trying, he says, to, ex to explore characters who are um, making that, you know, in that kind of stuck position. I'm a good person, but I did this bad thing. What do I do now? Um, this was, um, a Downsizing was nominated for um, a series of Art Director Awards, Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, again, very, very well received. Um, so tonight, we're going to talk about election, and I'm going to turn this over to Randy. And uh, if we can make this work, uh, I am going to chat about the film, which hopefully you will see between now and our call-in discussion show next Monday night, the night before the election. Yes, and here we go. And here we go. So um, I should begin by pointing out that this film, made in 1999, carries an R rating, uh, more for sexual situations than language. Uh, but do be forewarned in the event that you have any issues, uh, please. Or small children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no reef yet. Yeah. Children and small animals are deeply cautioned, although Good. if you can bore at, perhaps this warning is superfluous. This is based on a book by Tom Perota, actually a screenplay or an unpublished man, uh, manuscript, which uh, was later made into the film and sat around for several years before Paramount picked up the option and uh, sent it, a copy along to, uh, to uh, uh, Payne uh, for consideration. 
there are those who say it is a reworking of Schulberg's What Makes Sammy Run. If you've read uh, that uh, book, uh, you will be familiar with, with the themes there. Uh, Payne was initially reluctant. He didn't really want to do a teenage film. He was persuaded that it was an adult movie set in a high school. Uh, and, and in fact, the high school that he wanted to, that he originally wanted to shoot the film in, uh, had apparently read the script and said, not in my backyard. So <laughs> he put the, the production across the county line to a high school that was more receptive. The, the uh, book was adapted for the screen by Payne and by Jim Taylor. And as Arnold has pointed out, uh, received an Oscar nomination for uh, Best Adapted Screenplay, and in fact won it in that year. This was not an easy film for Paramount uh, and MTV, which was involved in the production because of the subject matter, uh, which was set in a high school. The Paramount marketers said, look, this film is called Election. That's strike one <laughs> against it. And number two, the subject matter is set in a high school strike two. But eventually they were persuaded. Um, if you read the book, you will discover that the original ending is quite different from that of the film. You may see the original ending of the film if you go to YouTube. Uh, which was run by the test audience and didn't receive uh, an enthusiastic reception, so was reshot, uh, inserting the Payne and Taylor ending that you see uh, when you look at, uh, at the film. But do go back and check and see uh, the original ending at your leisure. So the cast of this film. Uh, Mr. M, played by Matthew Broderick, receiving his Outstanding Teacher Award. Notice the apple on this award. Uh, there are some reviews that point out the religious connection of the apple to uh, a number of the scenarios in today's film. Uh, actually, Paramount wanted Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise in the role of Mr. M. Uh, a mistake, I think, um, thinking about both those actors, at least in a contemporary context, that they would have been wrong and probably <laughs> an unpleasant experience for them. But Matthew Broderick, who played in Ferris Bueller about a dozen years before, uh, was a perfect fit. And some people harking back to that film call this film, Ferris Bueller never gets a day off or Ferris Bueller meets his match with Tracy Flick, played by, Re by Reese Witherspoon, uh, who'd appeared before this film, which is considered to be a breakout film for her in several other productions, most notably the adult film Freeway a couple of years before. Uh, she read the script, uh, she, <laughs> She is said to have said that after reading the script, she would have rather played Tammy than Tracy. She said that after playing Tracy Flick in this film, she had a very good, difficult time obtaining additional parts uh, because she was portrayed as such a shrew. And she said, people thought I was crazy, angry, and controlling and strange. And there are those, this is a theme we might pursue in the post-film discussion, uh, of parallels between Tracy Flick, portrayed by Witherspoon, and Hillary Clinton, the, 19, the 2016 Democratic presidential candidate. Breakout film for Paul Metzler who had never appeared in a film before. Uh, he did have experience in high school plays and community theater. 
Uh, he initially turned down the role uh, of Paul Metzler, you uh, Metzler, uh, because of a certain scene which he thought would upset his grandmother. Payne told him, don't worry, just do the movie. It will be fine. And sister Tammy Metzler, uh, played by Jessica Campbell, uh, again, uh, someone with no movie experience, but did have considerable experience in community theater. She wasn't the original Tammy Metzler candidate. She, uh, Thora Birch was originally scheduled to play this role, but left after three days over creative differences with pain. And again, she'd never acted in a movie before. Uh, she is kind of the Ross Perot uh, of the election scenario. And in fact, the novel was inspired by the 1992 election um, between Clinton and uh, George Bush and uh, Ross Perot. Additional cast members, uh, I'm not going to talk much about them, although I did, uh, I was interested in the janitor in this film who plays himself. Uh, he was reluctant, according to Payne, he was reluctant to take on that role, but was convinced by a six pack provided by Payne and the crew. So you might, you might watch for him. He doesn't have, I think he has more facial expressions than lines in the film. But also lots of high school students from the local high schools. And if you look closely, I didn't notice this the first time through, but uh, it was mentioned in some subsequent reviews. Uh, there are quite a few adults in that high school audience. You'll notice lots of beards on uh, male students in the crowd. Probably not something you would see in 1999. Reactions to the film. Uh, it wasn't a blockbuster. It made $14.9, $15 million at the box office. It cost $9 million. So it made some money, but not an enormous amount. Perhaps it was the title election uh, or the R rating. Uh, who knows? Got generally good reviews, 92% uh, in Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, here you see a couple of comments. Uh, from uh, reviewers, uh, rarely a negative review uh, in the bunch. Um, strongly, strong cautions from uh, a number of parents groups, but nobody outright saying, don't go see this movie, or relatively few people uh, with that opinion. So as you're watching today's film, and Larry will probably weigh in on some of these themes and others, could this film be made today? Is Mr. M a hero in this movie? Is Tracy a heroine? Are there any heroes? Are there any heroines? Do women candidates need to become a little bit Tracy in their approach? We think about that in the context of the 2016 election and the election on November 3rd. Does the film ever resolve the difference between ethics and morals? And what does the film say about elections and democracy? Uh, something that Larry is going to treat in his introduction in a more detailed fashion. Finally, my favorite comment by H.L. Mencken, uh, the curmudgeonly writer uh, in the early 19th and mid 19th uh, 20th century. Uh, democracy is the theory that the common people know what they want and deserve and to get it good and hard. So make of that one of my favorite. I have that on my wall. I think that's an absolutely fabulous take on democracy. So I'm going to turn it back to Arnold for some wrap up comments, and then we're going to go to Larry's pre recorded uh, conversation about democracy and this film. Welcome. 
to the Modesto State Theater's presentation of Election, a 1999 MTV film directed by Alexander Payne and starring Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. Hi, I'm Larry Givinter, and I have the pleasure of commenting about Election from a political perspective. Let's start by asking, what's the point of an election? An election is presented as the fundamental expression of democracy. And what's a democracy? Well, in political science terms, a democracy is government by the people, directly or indirectly, with free, fair, and frequent elections. In a representative democracy, candidates should supposedly present clearly different policy choices so that voters have the opportunity to vote for a candidate whose values closely match their own. Okay, why? The answer is freedom. Freedom is having choices and the ability to choose among those choices. To the extent that one does not have choices, or the ability to choose, perhaps because of obstruction or restriction, one is not free. One gives up freedom if one foregoes choosing. Mr. M. in Election defines democracy as choosing between two competing alternatives. Do you want apples or oranges, he asks. That's democracy. Of course, Paul Messler says that he prefers a third choice, bananas. So, how do we make this happen? In a representative democracy, voting in an election is how we choose. Here are the American rules of the game for an election. We vote by districts. Each district one single representative, one person, one vote. Plurality wins. Whoever gets the most votes wins. Sometimes that's called first past the post. And lastly, winner takes all. Loser gets nothing. But what if an election doesn't matter? What if an election is irrelevant? So what? Who cares? Why bother? What if the candidates only advocate inconsequentially small policy and ideological differences? What if the outcome is rigged? What if it doesn't matter who wins because there is nothing at stake? What if There is no difference between the choices. What if the election is nothing but a pathetic charade? What if the only choice to voters is the lesser of two evils? And further, what if voters are disgusted with the choices and choose not to vote at all? Or what if an individual's vote Only one among hundreds or thousands or millions doesn't matter. Or what if no choice gets a majority? So vote for me, because I don't even want to go to college. And I don't care. And as president, I won't do anything. The only promise I will make is that if elected... I will immediately dismantle the student government so that none of us will ever have to sit through one of these stupid assemblies again! Or don't vote for me! Who cares? Don't vote at all!
Mr. M counts the ballots. Tracy Flick wins by a single vote, 257 to Paul Metzler's 256. Mr. M, disliking Tracy Flick, probably remembers the political adage, the people who cast the votes don't decide an election, the people who count the votes do. Here's what happened. On the first count, Tracy Flick wins by 257 to Paul Metzler's 256. Tammy Metzler was disqualified, but she would have won by a plurality had she not been disqualified. Ironically, Paul Metzler would have won on the first count if he had not voted for Tracy Flick. Mr. M decides to destroy two of Tracy Flick's ballots, reducing the voter turnout from 803 to 801 and giving Paul Metzler the win by 256 to 255. But maybe we shouldn't be so cynical. Maybe in a strong, functioning democracy, competing factions compromise extreme policy and ideological positions well before the elections, as they seek a voting majority. Even though the candidates proclaim their differences, they position themselves to appeal to the broadest range of public opinion. To most voters, each candidate then presents a not ideal, but nevertheless acceptable, middle-of-the-road compromise. They are perceived as Tweedledum and Tweedledee, marginally different, and equally imperfect. So, in the end, election leaves us with these questions. Do elections matter? Does winning matter? And what is winning anyway? Anyway. Thank you. This is Larry Giventer. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Larry, for all this really good information. And we invite you to a, a election eve party. We hope you'll come and enjoy yourself. Uh, here's some good ideas and talk to us about the films and about your ideas about uh, that it raises about elections and democracy and, and all these kind of good things. We invite you to uh, come back and join us for a, a live call in uh, program on Monday evening. Uh, November 2nd, call in with your questions or submit your questions in advance. Uh, we will be joined by Kate Nygaard, uh, who will provide some perspective uh, on woman, women's candidates. Uh, and she brings a wealth of political experience as a political activist, uh, two-term member of the Modesto School Board, and candidate for the Assembly in the 1980s when female candidates were really very rare. And she will share some of her experiences as a woman candidate competing in the arena of men. So I even have proof here <laughs> candidate among my vast collection of political memorabilia. So please join us, submit your questions in advance. If you uh, aren't registered for the class, you can still do it. Uh, don't forget to go out and take a look at the film. Uh, our discussion won't mean much unless you have seen it. So again, and remember that it is R-rated. So there are some wince-producing yeah. sections of the of the film. Yeah, and you will be able to find it online. Uh, we can't yes. offer it through the state, but it is available online, and you won't have any trouble finding it. Yes. Um, so we look forward to seeing you um, the night before Election Day, so this Monday night. And it'll be the four of us, and we'll be um, talking about the film and about all kinds of things. And do, uh, as uh, Randy says, do kind of bring your questions, either email them to us, or on the evening of the event, you can uh, kind of give them to us in, uh, in the chat. And we will fearlessly answer your questions and perhaps even predict what's going to happen on November 3rd, won't we? Oh, yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> <laughs> or you can ask us anyway. You can we may decline. 
Good night, everybody. Thanks a Good lot. Night.